What's up, everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So I thought I'd film this little piece because I was doing it. So here we are. I'm putting an O-band on this Toyota coil winder that I'm building. And um, this stuff is a polyurethane. This is 3 16 diameter. And it is actually really, uh, really, really tough stuff. This is considered TPU. It's the same stuff you 3D print with, the TPU. It's the exact same stuff. It's very, very durable, and they use it a lot for industrial applications for uh, O-bands, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, I used to put a lot of this stuff on it my two jobs ago, previous, previous job. Um, ooh, I gotta be more careful than that. Anyway, um, so normally what you do is you use this jig right here. I happen to have one because the old, old one got thrown out, and it was in the scrap pile, so I brought it home, and I've had it for years, and I've never actually used it. Good thing I kept it though, because now I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to show you how this is normally done professionally, and then uh, how I'm going to do it, because I don't have all the necessary tools. Safety first, boys and girls. All right. This will probably be some time lapse, so. This is going to be hard to judge the actual temperature, but we're going to do the best we can. Okay, well actually, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, it heated pretty good in my opinion. That is what you normally want to see. You want a really good smash like that. And I'll show you why in just a second. Yeah, I'd say that's uh, actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good way of doing it. It sort of opened up a little bit more than I would have liked. Uh, so I had to kind of move the blade back and forth, but cool. Let's let it cool off and then I'll show you how to finish it. Alright, so I let this sit for a little while. Uh, the proper terminology for this is actually called vulcanizing, which is where you bond two things together like this. They do a lot of seamless belts like this. Um, luckily for me, I've done this before so I know what to and what not to do. So the way that this clamp is designed is it just pops open and swings out like this. And then there you got your your connection. So let me get you a close up of this. But uh, here's what the clamp looks like. You could probably make one of these pretty simply. Um, you might even be able to use something like a regular hand clamp, something to modify, something like this that might work. But this is the technical correct tool. This one's probably quite old. It appears to be made by that company and maybe fixed a few times. I don't know, it's just welded on there. It is all aluminum. That's probably for heat dissipation. So, let's look at this thing a little closer. Okay, so when you vulcanize something like this, you actually do want it to look like this. Because what you actually want to do is make sure you get a solid bond through the entire center of this. And it looks like it's bonded really, really well. It's actually like melted together on that edge and then this edge is seamed. So you're supposed to take a pair of one of these sharp dykes, side cuts, whatever you want to call them, precision. Uh, these are actually precision cuts by this company. They're okay. I've had better branded versions of this. But what you do is actually cut this off. So. very carefully. Try not to get too deep. Because obviously what you're wanting to do is keep a, uh, a round surface here. And uh, yeah cut this up a little bit better. That is a, actually a really good bond. I'm quite happy with that. Looks like it's just right. So you could clean up a little more. 
but um, that's basically what it's supposed to look like when you're done. That one probably needs a little bit more cleanup. But if you look in there, you should be able to pull it, stretch it, and there shouldn't be any uh, any breakage there. So I'd say that's a good uh, that's a good one. Okay, well there you go. Just a short little video of uh, how you properly vulcanize this uh, polyurethane O banding. If you ever need any O banding for anything, uh, I went on Amazon and bought this by the 10 foot. Otherwise you have to buy like a 100 foot roll and it's actually quite expensive. But if you just need like a 10 foot section like I did, 10 feet, I got about a foot and a little bit left over. So um, yeah, they provide short sections of it. Anytime you need an O banding, uh, you don't really want to use it on anything that's going to get hot, but anything that you want to be very rubbery and sticky and grip well and last a long time. This is some good stuff. I also got some clear. They also make it in blue, and they also make some that actually has um, inserts. Let me show you, actually. Ah, uh, well, I must have used it for something else, but here's a much bigger diameter piece. This is, I think, 3 8 or something, 5 8 it's pretty big stuff. This is what I'm used to vulcanizing. So, anyway, that's it. Just a short snippet. Peace out. Bye. Oh, in case you're wondering, I'm building a toroidal coil winder. I built one like five years ago. There's a video online, I'll post it in the description. This is the new one. Plan A, open source project. I got most of the plans sort of drawn up in 3D, but it's like 50-50, you're going to have to use your imagination on the other half. Let me turn it on though. I got it hooked up to a battery charger. I don't have this about the supply built yet. Here we go. Works pretty well. So there's six volts. It's definitely, uh, that rim is definitely, definitely not round. But you can get a good shot of the, uh, of the belt running there. Little bit at a time, little bit at a time. And here's the, uh, the base for the Toyota coil to be held in place. Anyway, just thought I'd show you what it exactly was I was putting together. So you can gotta get an idea of what kind of these uh, use these belts are good for. See ya!